I have not done a video on Myanmar, the Southeast Asian country of Myanmar, in quite a while. However, I do have a very extensive playlist covering U.S. interference in Myanmar. Uh, it, the link will be in the video description below. And I, I thought now is a good time to do a little bit of an update because I see uh, another uptick in interest in Washington to attempt to to shape events that are unfolding in Myanmar. Let me just give you a really quick background in case you know nothing about Myanmar at all, or just to refresh your memory. Myanmar is in Southeast Asia. It's part of ASEAN and it neighbors Thailand, where I'm based, as well as India, Bangladesh, Laos, and China. And China is by far its largest trading partner. Uh, Myanmar also has very close relations with Russia. So you, you can already see why the U.S. would be interested in dividing and destroying Myanmar, essentially. And that is what's happening. I'll get into that in a minute. It was a former British colony known as Burma. It got its independence in 1948, but the U.S. and the U.K. never accepted that. And since then, they have always attempted to reassert Western domination over Myanmar. Uh, they also refer to Myanmar as Burma still to this day. They refuse to call it Myanmar. And this is very similar to how the U.S., the U.K., the EU refer to uh, the, the political party that constitutes the People's Republic of China as the CCP, when in reality, the Chinese people call it the Communist Party of China, CPC. Uh, so if you catch yourself calling Myanmar Burma or the CPC, the CCP, you, you may be a victim of this, this very petty and childish method the West attempts to assert itself over others by telling them what they'll be called rather than calling them what they call themselves. Uh, so that is that is just part of what has been going on with Myanmar since 1948. Now, the UK, as, as it had done in many other countries that it colonized, it, it created a colonial army and it picked ethnic minorities to place in prominent positions in that army. And uh, they neglected, deliberately so, the ethnic majority. And this was to create huge uh, divides between different ethnic groups. And since 1948, the US and the UK have invested heavily in maintaining this animosity between these ethnic groups. And I am going to tell you right now, I've talked to people on both sides of the divide in Myanmar, and you cannot talk to them about these ethnic divides. Uh, they may or may not understand that it was the British who created them, but, but they don't care. They are obsessed with this hatred, and it is something they cannot overcome. And if they cannot overcome it, ultimately, or no matter what else happens, their, their country is going to remain in, in crisis. And since 1948, that is all Myanmar has done, is suffer this internal conflict between all of these ethnic groups and the, the central government. And it's not just these ethnic groups against the central government, it's these ethnic groups against other ethnic groups. It is a real, real mess. So uh, the United States, through the National Endowment for Democracy, uh, which is a regime change organization, its board of directors include people who are notorious uh, regime change experts. This is, this is what they do. And they're also... Uh, directly involved in U.S. wars of aggression. You also have people like Elliot Abrams uh, implicated in crimes against humanity in uh, Latin America, overseeing death squads that killed men, women, and children. And those are the people who run the NED, and the NED funds all of these opposition groups in Myanmar fighting the central government. That This has been going on for decades. Uh, the opposition is headed by Aung San Suu Kyi, Aung San Suu Kyi, you may have heard of her. You may even think highly of her, but then you have to ask yourself why. Uh, who told you that she is someone uh, thought of highly? It was the Western media who told you that. They have very carefully crafted her image over decades. She heads the National League for Democracy, the main opposition party. The U.S. pumps millions and millions of dollars into Myanmar's uh, political system. Uh, to give parties like the National League for Democracy the advantage. They will always win elections. They don't have to rig the elections. 
they have such an advantage because of the U.S. pouring campaign money in and uh, all kinds of programs to to indoctrinate and educate uh, regarding political literacy that they, they will vote exactly the way the United States wants each and every time. And that this is a real problem. And by 2016, they, they perfected this, their, their grip on the levers of of political power in Myanmar were, were so strong that they eventually got Aung San Suu Kyi and her government into power in 2016. Now she's, uh, she was married to a British citizen. Her children are British citizens. So by law in, in Myanmar, she's not allowed to hold any sort of uh, senior position of power. Because of that, she created her own position of power, state counselor, and that is the position she held from 2016 until February 2021. Uh, but before I get into the, the military ousting her in early 2021, I want to talk about her administration when she was in power. She surrounded herself, she had a, an inner circle of foreign advisors. So she had a British Foreign Office employee, Joseph Fisher, was, was running her day-to-day -day events and connecting her with the, the Western media. She also had Australian economist Sean Turnell. He was reworking the, the economic policies of Myanmar to basically close out China, Myanmar's largest and most dependable trade partner, also a key infrastructure partner. And also uh, Myanmar was part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. So you can see why the US was, tr was trying to shut China out and then shift the economy into the hands of the West, as they always do. Uh, there was also a British lawyer, Robert Sanpei, and he was trying to restructure uh, the legal system and also rewrite Myanmar's constitution. So the most sensitive aspects of Myanmar's internal political affairs were being uh, reshaped by these absolute foreigners, white, white men, uh, in Aung San Suu Kyi's inner circle. It's, so when Myanmar's military ousted Aung San Suu Kyi's government, you can see why they did this. It was the country being recolonized. Uh, and this cannot, this is not acceptable. It's not acceptable under international law, but because of the influence the U.S. holds over institutions like the United Nations, uh, nothing will ever be done about this. So Myanmar had to do it themselves. And they did it by ousting ousting her in what was essentially a, a coup. You could define it as a coup. Since the military ousted Aung San Suu Kyi and her National League for Democracy, whoever escaped going to jail, because many senior leaders went to jail, uh, they formed what is called a national unity government. So this is another one of these fake parallel governments that the West backs and recognizes instead of the actual government of Myanmar. And they're trying to put pressure on everyone else to recognize it as well. The, the fake Minister of Foreign Affairs, Zin Mar Ang, she regularly communicates with senior representatives at the US State Department. Uh, Zin Mar Ang, and, and we can go to we can go to the National Unity Government's official website. We can scroll down and we, we can see who the different uh, people are filling these positions. We can see Zin Mar Ang listed as uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. We could also go to the National Endowment for Democracy's website. We could see that Zin Mar Ang literally has her own page on the NED's website. She's a fellow of the National Endowment for Democracy. And if you look down here, you could see they, they list all the NED funded organizations that she was the head of. That's how bad US interference in Myanmar was. That again, this is why Myanmar's military, whatever you think of them, this is why they had to remove them from power. When Myanmar's military took power, immediately there were US sponsored protests. We're, we're told that they're grassroots spontaneous protests. They weren't, it was, it's all part of Aung San Suu Kyi's political party and the opposition network that the U.S. has invested millions in creating inside Myanmar. And they took to the streets and they were violent. They, they provoked the police. The military eventually came in and the violence just continued to task like, just like in Syria, just like in Libya, just like in Ukraine in 2014, as a matter of fact. Uh, what eventually happened was the creation of these people's defense forces and they are directly controlled by the national unity government. And they, 
and just so you can understand how transparent the U.S. Uh, agenda is in Myanmar, this is exactly what they started doing. So this is from CNN. Chinese factories set on fire and at least 38 killed in Myanmar's deadliest day since coup. Um, not only were Chinese investments like factories attacked and destroyed, uh, infrastructure related to the Belt and Road Initiative were also attacked and destroyed. So this is the Irrawaddy. The Irrawaddy is a U.S. government-funded opposition media platform in Myanmar, one of many. Uh, this is China-backed pipeline facility damaged in Myanmar resistance attacks. So again, it's very transparent what the U.S. is doing, what their agenda is in, in Myanmar. This is all to spoil Myanmar's relationship with China and to remove from the board uh, a, an ally, a close ally of China. Uh, here is another uh, U.S. government-funded opposition media platform, Myanmar Now. And this, again, this, this was all after the military ousted on Sun Tzu Chi and her National League for Democracy. It says, as spat of killings continues, anti-junta forces warn of more to come. And it's in this article, again, opposition media admitting that the People's Defense Forces see red, even Red Cross workers and firefighters, absolutely anyone working with the central government is fair game for being gunned down or, or chopped up. I have contacts in Myanmar who send me videos of exactly what Myanmar now is admitting is happening. Although Myanmar now does not get into graphic detail, I, I see the videos of these People's Defense Forces dealing with you know what they call collaborators and it's horrific it's isis style violence and this should surprise no one the u.s finds the the lowest and most extreme members of every society that it targets it empowers them it arms them it funds them and unleashes them and and in, a, in an attempt to divide and destroy that targeted society so this is what's this is what's been going on in myanmar since 2021 now the, the government, the military and the government, the police, more or less have a, a handle on all of this. Time is, I think, on their side. And this People's Defense Force and this national unity government, they, they've resorted to terrorism because they are not going to be able to militarily overwhelm the central government and, and the army because they're not as popular as the Western media likes to portray them as. With all of this in mind, you, you see the evidence from the NED's uh, official website. Since we're talking about the NED, I guess uh, let's just take a look at this. The NED disclosure for all the programs it's funding in Myanmar. And, and note that they're referring to Myanmar as Burma. And the list just goes on and on. And I'll just scroll down like this, on and on and on and on. And they are interfering in every imaginable aspect of Myanmar's internal political affairs in violation of international law uh, as described in the UN Charter. This is, this is what the NED is doing in Myanmar. So with all of that in mind, the NED is meddling, uh, building up the opposition, the, the literal national unity government minister for foreign affairs having her own NED webpage on the NED's website, Aung San Suu Kyi hanging out in Washington getting awards from the National Endowment for Democracy surrounded literally by white men uh, actually running the country for her. Uh, seeing all of this, understanding all of this, uh, I want to show you this from another U.S. government organization, the United States Institute of Peace. And this is titled, It's Time to Help Myanmar's Resistance Prevail. The country's brutal coup regime is no candidate for political compromise. So this is an institute of peace saying we will have no compromise with anyone. And, and again, the U.S., who are they to, to say anything about Myanmar's internal political affairs? This article, among the policy recommendations that it makes, uh, demands that support for all of these opposition groups should be at least doubled. This is, this is the full recommendation here. I at least double the amount of assistance to civil society organizations supporting core resistance groups, including the National Unity Government, the National Unity Consultative Council, state-level consultative councils, local governance actors, civilian wings of ethnic armed groups. This is the, the Institute of Peace uh, supporting armed groups. 
strike committees and civil disobedient movement groups, among others. And these civil disobedient movements, they, they will chop you up into little pieces if you don't join their strikes. And this is covered even in the opposition media funded by the U.S. government. Now, if the U.S. isn't funding these organizations to begin with, how can they possibly double, at least double, the assistance provided to them? This is an admission from a U.S. government organization that all of these organizations all along have been funded and backed and, I would say, created by the U.S. government. Think about it this way. If the U.S. could, in, a, in an ideal world for an American uh, hegemon, they would like to just make Chinese factories disappear. If they, if they could just bomb them without consequence, they would. They would just blow them up. And they would blow up Chinese infrastructure inside China and outside of China. And anyone working with China would suffer a, a similar fate. But they cannot openly militarily do this. So what they do instead, through the National Endowment for Democracy, whose board of directors is chaired by people who have participated directly in U.S. wars of aggression, what they do is they build up extremist opposition groups who will do it for them. So they're burning down Chinese factories. At the end of the day, the factory has been destroyed, whether it's a U.S. bomb that destroys it or a U.S.-funded agitator who destroys it. It's the same outcome. This is how the U.S. is waging a, a very indirect proxy conflict against China. This is how they're actually doing it. They cannot outcompete China in any sort of constructive way. They're going to do it this way by dividing and destroying a nation of tens of millions of people, getting uh, hundreds, thousands killed in the process, and destabilizing an entire region. Because I, I can tell you, living in Thailand, the conflicts in, say, Myanmar, neighboring Myanmar, do eventually affect Thailand as well. Now, I, I wanted to do this update because no one talks about Myanmar or Southeast Asia, at least honestly. If you read the, the news, the BBC, CNN, Fox News, any of these sources, they're going to portray this as uh, freedom fighters rising up against an evil dictatorship. When in reality, as, as you can see from the NED's website itself, it, it was the U.S. who built up this opposition group, and they're doing this simply to deny China a constructive partner in the region. And by doing so, they are denying all of the opportunities partnership with China provides to people living in Myanmar. The U.S. is not going to build bridges and railroads and ports and pipelines for Myanmar. They're not. They're not going to do that. It was only until China's rise uh, and China beginning to build these infrastructure projects that the U.S. even started talking about it. And it was all empty rhetoric. The Blue Dot Network, the Build Back Better World, uh, it was all empty rhetoric. It's, it's China that is going to, it is China that is rising on the global stage and it is with China that all of these nations are rising. And, and I want to kind of point out the similarities here. When the U.S. was attempting to provoke war with Russia over Ukraine, the U.S. was also at the same time attempting to overthrow the government in Belarus and also in Kazakhstan. Uh, regarding China, the U.S. is now attempting in a very similar manner to provoke a conflict with China uh, over and through Taiwan. But as they do that, they are also attempting to overthrow the government in Myanmar and destroy any prospects of a constructive relationship between uh, China and Myanmar. They have anti-government protests here in the streets in Thailand. The U.S. is funding them. The core organizations are all funded by the U.S. National Endowment for Democracy. I've, uh, I've covered this for years and years. It's important to keep an eye on all of this. Uh, if, you, if you understand what a threat to global peace and stability and also prosperity the, the, the U.S. is meddling and provocations are in Ukraine versus Russia, you need to understand that it will be just as bad, if not worse, uh, as the U.S. continues doing a, a very similar process against China in, in places like Myanmar. Thailand, and also through Taiwan, which is actually part recognized as part of China by everyone, including the United States. Let's keep an eye on this. Let's try to raise awareness about this. The next time you see a story 
about Myanmar in the Western media, you'll you'll know what's actually really going on there versus what they're trying to convince you is going on there. And if you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. Check the video description below, especially if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, for other places you can find and follow my work. I'm on Telegram. I update that several times a day. It is an alternative to Twitter and Facebook, which I have been suspended from using. Uh, in case YouTube censors me off of their platform, all of my videos are automatically backed up on Odyssey and Rumble. And if, and if I am unable to upload to YouTube, I will upload all new videos from then on to Rumble and Odyssey. In the video description below will be all of the links to all of these articles I went over, as well as the playlist uh, for all of my videos on Myanmar. I, I go over the evidence in depth of US meddling in Myanmar. If you're interested or if you have any doubts, just go through those videos and you, you will see the evidence for yourself. Also in the video description below are ways you can help support my work. You can do that through Buy Me A Coffee, through Patreon and PayPal. And to everyone who has been helping out, whether it's month to month, through one-time donations, or even if you're just helping share my work with others, getting the word out there, I greatly appreciate all of that. I could not do this work without that support. So thank you, and as always, thank you for watching.